Hi, my name is Dr. Tibor Lazar. I'm owner and surgeon of Lazar Veterinary Surgery. I'm now going to talk about a procedure called a subtotal colectomy. This is a surgery that is performed on cats that become chronically constipated and we do a surgical procedure to remove the uh, large portion of the colon. I want to first thank Webster Veterinary Supply for allowing me to show their illustrations. This is from their DIA um, app in the iPad. So this is a condition that we see in cats called idiopathic megacolon. Megacolon means large colon, which is the large part of the intestine just before stool exits to the anus. The word idiopathic simply means we don't know why this occurs. Uh, this is uh, a, a not terribly unusual condition in some cats. It can be young cats, it can be older cats, and what you would be noticing is that the stools are becoming very dried out, very firm. Essentially, the colon is losing its ability to move the stool out. And the longer it sits in the colon, the more dried out and the larger it gets. Um, it's not unusual to see a cat strain excessively in the litter box, go back and forth quite frequently, and perhaps even cry out. Um, and if the stool is becoming very large, that should help clue you in. If there is only um, uh, somewhat of an enlargement and the colon is actually still working to some degree, it may take a while before it completely uh, ceases uh, functioning um, and dietary change may help. Things like stool softeners can be very useful. And there is a particular medication called cisapride that can help stimulate the colon to move the stool along. And these are all things that should be tried before considering surgery because there are risks that can uh, be associated with surgery. Now, once it's been determined that your cat is free of other disease, the blood work is fine, kidneys are functioning, there are no other anatomic reasons for the stool to uh, be prevented from passing, then um, we need to think about the potential for surgery um, certainly in cats that are not responding to medical management. And, and honestly, some owners, they just have a very difficult time giving the medications to their cats, and that would be another reason that we would consider surgery. So the surgical procedure is called a subtotal colectomy, and the sub portion means that we're not removing the entire colon, but rather the majority of it. A portion of the colon remains underneath the pelvis, and that will not be removed that is uh, all the way down here. We're not seeing the pelvis portion, but there's the stool uh, causing the colon to be stretched out, and then we get to the, the narrow area by the pelvis, uh, which we, again, will remain intact. Otherwise, we would need to cut open the pelvis to reach it. Near the top portion, uh, what we don't see on the illustration is that this would connect to the small intestine, which is uh, a long loop of intestines as well. And we don't remove the small intestine, but we do remove the large intestine just as it's beginning, again, leaving a small portion called the ileocecocolic junction uh, intact. We leave it intact for two reasons. One is that this area up top is not very stretchable. We need to be able to connect the top portion to the bottom portion of the colon. And if we remove an excessive amount, it may be difficult to to re-suture the ends together without there being tension on the incision, which could potentially lead to failure. Um, but really, more importantly, uh, there is another way that we can remove the whole ileocecocolic junction, but then many of these cats are destined to have liquid diarrhea for life, so the ideal situation is to uh, leave that intact. The um, aftercare from surgery is not terribly difficult. Your pet will likely stay in the hospital for a couple of days. For about 24 hour hours, we do not want there to be any food or water by mouth, so it's important that your cat stays on intravenous fluids. Uh, and then we'll start offering water and food, and most pets will go home two days after surgery. Um, at that point, you just need to keep activity restricted for a total of two weeks. At two weeks out, the skin incision is healed and your cat is ready to resume normal activity. Uh, even by one week out, the incision of the colon should be uh, healed and the risks for complications should be minimal to none. 
Now, as far as these complications go, we can certainly see some mild complications, some minor complications, bruising, swelling, redness, loss of appetite. These are not uh, too unusual. Uh, as far as the more severe complications, it is uh, essentially a given that there will be diarrhea following surgery. Um, once we remove the colon, the body is now not able to reabsorb uh, a large amount of fluid uh, back into the body, and so this leads to liquid diarrhea in most cases initially. What will happen though is that the small intestine that is then placed anatomically where the large intestine was, it will stretch out as time goes on over several weeks, it will adapt, and it will essentially take over the job of the large intestine or colon. Uh, and so in most cases, the stool quality will improve as the weeks go on. Um, it's, if we leave the ileocecal-colic junction in place, it's fairly uncommon to see a liquid diarrhea for life, but there is that potential complication. On the other hand, in some cats, this stool may firm up to the point where it's again becoming too hard and creates too much discomfort. Um, in those situations, we may have to re-add some stool softener and perhaps even some cisapride. Typically, medications would not have to be to the level that it was uh, before surgery. Uh, so in most cats, they will go back to a fairly normal, perhaps a little bit on the soft side of stool. The uh, most serious complication, the most life-threatening complication, would be if there's any leakage from the incision. Again, the small intestine will be pulled down to where the portion of the colon remains near the pelvis, and we do not want there to be any tension on the incision. Even without tension, there is that potential risk. Any surgery of the intestine we, where we are removing a portion and reconnecting, there is about a 5% risk of failure of at least a portion of that incision, which would then cause stool to leak in the abdomen, um, and that would create a uh, septic or an infected situation, which would certainly be a life-threatening condition. If caught early, if you notice a change of attitude, there's, uh, uh, your cat has become now very quiet, stops eating, becomes lethargic, um, hiding a lot, and if this happens within the first week of surgery, these should clue you in that there is the potential for a major complication. You should have your cat checked out with your family veterinarian or an emergency clinic because it may not be the case, but if it is, and as long as we act aggressively, we can surgically repair the situation and have an ultimately good outcome. So it's a procedure not without some risk, but overall the risks are very low, and when we have cats that are repeatedly going into their veterinarian to have stool removed, we call this deobstipation, uh, it's a miserable experience for any cat, and to have it done on a regular basis is uh, just uh, very stressful, it upsets them, upsets the owner, uh, and so the benefit of surgery is that we should be able to eliminate that uh, in the future.